So this video is an update to my original tutorial on how to create a fuzzy search with a filter and sort. A lot of comments came in after the fact about this, um, this tutorial because it required you to actually click away from the search input in order for the search to execute. And people thought that that was like a subpar user experience and they were absolutely right, but I didn't know how to change it. So just to show you what I mean, like notice I've typed here, but nothing has updated yet until I actually click outside of it and then it updates. Um, similarly, if I wanted to click, you know, if I wanted to filter down even more, uh, nothing changes until I click outside of it. So, um, and you know, if you noticed here, like, oh, why are there like these three, like, why is this Tatamo showing up here or Cowboy when this is cat? It's because we're using a fuzzy search. And again, if you wanna see how to set that up, go check out my original tutorial. Similarly, if you wanna see how to filter by these cuisines um, or how to um, add the different sorts, that's all covered in the first tutorial. So the improvement here is that actually, oops, and this is now called approved search. The improvement here is that now you actually do not have to click outside of the search box in order to execute the search. If you noticed, it starts searching immediately. There's a slight delay um, as you continue to fill it in. That's because of the workflows firing. That's just like the bubble speed thing. I can play around with the order a little bit and see if that improves it. I don't know, I haven't really done a whole lot of optimization on that yet, uh, but overall I still think it's a better search experience. And the other caveat to this is that I have no idea how this affects workflow units, I haven't even looked. So if it happens to take a lot of units, please do not yell at me. Um, like I said, I didn't look. So um, I'll put that on you to check out that based on the demands of your own application. So I'm just gonna show you what I did to change this. So um, first, if we go look at the editor page itself, I didn't make any changes to the page itself except on the page element. I added a new custom state. So if you're watching, the, if you watch the original tutorial, you'll see we had this custom state restaurants which was the type restaurant, which is one of my data types, and it's a list. And this is because this is actually used to set the data source for the repeating group. Um, we're not messing with this, so that stays there. What I did was I added this new custom state I called search term, and it's the type text, and it doesn't have a default value, and it's not a list. So you need to make sure you add that before you go into your workflows. And then in the workflows themselves, I'm actually, so this is just the workflows related to search. I did that, I put it in a folder just to make it easier for you to see. Um, so just real quickly, we do have this workflow when page is loaded, we set the state of the element, meaning the page. Um, the restaurant state is search for restaurants. So it's gonna be just a list of every restaurant that's in our database. If you wanted to put some constraints on it, you could. We've got it sorted by when it was created because that's our default sort. Um, so that did not change, that's the same. And um, it actually what you could do here just to uh, make it really clean, if this will open for me, there it goes, um, is that you could also set the state of the search term and just set it to blank just so that it resets whenever the page is loaded. It'll, it should reset anyways, but just to, for, to make, just to double check. All right, the original workflow that we were using on when it was requiring you to click outside of it was this, um, the event when this element is value is changed and the element is input search by name. So that was that search input. And so when that value changed, it would trigger this workflow, which had two custom workflows called filter and search and sort. Again, I go through those in the original tutorial, but basically this applies the filters and updates the data source to filter the data um, that is reported in that custom state restaurant. And then similarly, this uh, sort applies the sort order to the data. And so anyways, this is disabled right now because this is the workflow that required you to click outside it or hit enter in order to search. And I just kept it here because I didn't, I didn't know if this was gonna work and I didn't wanna lose it. What I did was I created this this new workflow and this new custom workflow. 
And basically, if we look here, the new workflow, instead of being due when the element is changed, we are now using do when the same element, input search by name's value, is not equal to the page's custom state search terms value. So to add this, it is this um, do when condition is true, right? So that's the, that's the new trigger versus the old trigger was this under elements when input value is changed. So we're doing do when condition is true. And also note we have it set to run every time. Otherwise, if it's, if it's once, the options are just once or every time, then the first time you start typing, it will run this, but then it won't run it again. Okay, um, and so we set the condition here, input search by names value is not the page's search term, meaning it's not that text value that is in the search term. And so when this is triggered, it will trigger those same first two steps, the filter, search, and sort, or, uh, filter and search, and then the sort. And then it will also trigger this third step, which is set page state. And if we look here, the only thing in this one is set the state of the page, set this search term state to the input's value. Now, I wanna explain this really quickly in case you're, you haven't worked with these a lot, but basically what we're doing is we're using the input's value to update the search, we're updating the sort, and then we're updating the value of the state so that if we change the input's value, say we type another letter, we're going to see, oh, hey, this is no longer the same as what's in this custom state, and it will trigger the workflow again. So that's how this new workflow works, and you see that it worked pretty quickly. Um, if we triggered this page set the state earlier, it would set the state, and then it would be searching by the old state. I don't know. Anyways, I haven't played around with that. Um, might, that might speed things up a little bit if I have that um, set earlier. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyways, this is the way I have it set up right now. I probably just confused everybody. Apologies. Ignore everything I just said for the last 15 seconds and set it up like this. And then if you want to play around with this, um, you're more than welcome to. But that's the change that I made and it seems to be working pretty good. So I just wanted to put it out there in case that helps you guys with your apps. And let me know if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts on how we can improve it. And also let me know if you have any ideas for other tutorials that I could record for you that will make your bubbling easier. All right, that's it for today. So have a great one. Bye.